Good afternoon. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I'm coughing. I have an allergy. Uh, my talk is on an reinforced and carbon fiber reinforced plastic masonry walls submitted to out of plane loading with the experimental and numerical uh, study. Uh, the work is done uh, in the case in the, in the, for the PhD uh, thesis of uh, Tantrung Bui. And I was the supervisor of this thesis. And uh, for, uh, the, for the reinforcement of, with carbon fiber reinforced plastic, we have a strong collaboration with the Fresine company. Uh, the problematic in some cases, uh, masonry can sustain uh, external uh, pressure, uh, surfacing external pressure. Uh, this is the case when we have a, a blast loads induced by an explosion, or uh, for example, in mountain area, uh, for houses, we can have uh, snow avalanches. So we, snow avalanches can induce uh, overpressure on the masonry wall. Uh, of course, out of plane load can also be induced by seismic loads or by extreme uh, wind. In our case, we study. Uh, sorry. In our case, we study mainly uh, uh, house uh, habitation. Uh, the methodology to study uh, the, the masonry under uh, external pressure is to make tests to understand the phenomenology and to see the different uh, uh, ruin modes and also to make simulations uh, to see if uh, with the finite element or discrete element method we can coach the behavior and understand what happened. So if it's the case, we can do a uh, parametric study. Uh, in our case, we have uh, chosen to use discrete element method because this method is uh, good for discontinuous pro problem. We know that finite element method is uh, needs continuity. So for uh, masonry, it would be better to use discrete element method because we have a specific pattern. Uh, we have studied the uh, Unreinforced configuration and reinforced configuration. For unreinforced configuration, we have two tests. Uh, we change the boundary conditions, and for the reinforced uh, configurations, we have also two tests. Uh, one one uh, case is a uh, light reinforcement, and for the other case, uh, we have uh, uh, a strong reinforcement uh, because every every block is uh, comforted. Uh, for this study, a specific uh, test setup is uh, built. Uh, we are at the scale, at the real scale. Uh, you can see here the mock-up with the main principal, uh, the main or principal uh, wall, and two returns wall. Uh, we want to be. Uh, in adequation with the reality. This is why we choose to have this two returns wall to be more uh, in adequation with the boundary rigidity uh, uh, we have in the real case. Uh, we have two, uh, two mock-ups for reinforced configurations, one uh, with the beam and one with the slab. Uh, the mock-up is free at the, uh, at the top. Uh, we have uh, a reaction wall obtained by HEB uh, metal beams, and this DC reaction wall is anchored on uh, the concrete uh, uh, slab of uh, the laboratory. Uh, to apply uh, external pressure, we use uh, DC, uh, these uh, water bags. Uh, we have six water bags, and we have a continuous uh, pressure uh, on the main uh, main wall or principal wall. Uh, we have, of course, several transducer, LVDT transducer, to uh, to uh, follow uh, lateral displacement, 
and we have also a digital image correlation to analyze the return walls. Uh, here uh, you can see the 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 the, the two walls and uh, the two mockups, sorry, and uh, you can see that we are at the real scale level with uh, two meters for the heights and about three meters for the length. Uh, and uh, like I have said, we have two configurations for boundary conditions, one with uh, a concrete beam and one with a concrete slab. Of course, this boundary con uh, configuration is more uh, stiff uh, than this one, and we want to uh, to uh, to gauge the effect of boundary conditions. Uh, two configurations for the reinforced case: uh, one uh, with uh, uh, high high reinforcement. By high, I, I mean that every every block is comforted. Uh, every block. Uh, have uh, a carbon fiber reinforced plastic layer and uh, less uh, less uh, reinforcement in this case we have uh, uh, we want to study uh, the limit load which means the collapse and the post critical uh, limit load uh, for this we need to anchor the the layers the strips and we have anchors drilled anchors for each layer, the vertical layer and the horizontal layers. Here you have a, a photo of this uh, system used by Fresine for to, to, to anchor the, the layers. Uh, and uh, of course, to be representative of the reality, uh, the reinforcement is done by a technician from Fresine to be in adequation what we, with the methodology used in situ. Uh, the results. The first curve here is obtained for the unreinforced under configuration uh, with the beam at a boundary at bottom boundary condition. Uh, you can see that we the, the crack appearance is obtained at about uh, 270 millibars. Then uh, we have cracks, cracks propagation here, and we have a, a, a collapse here, but there is stress redistribution, and we can see that we have a high ductility uh, in this case, but due, uh, due to the rigidity of the return walls. Uh, in the case of uh, concrete slab, uh, the initial crack appearance is delayed and uh, also the capacity of the, of the wall is higher than in, in this case. You can see here the collapse for this configuration and the collapse is here for this uh, configuration. So we have more ductility in this case due to stiff uh, boundary conditions. Uh, in the case uh, uh, with the strong reinforcement, uh, the initial crack uh, appearance is uh, really delayed. Uh, we have we enhanced the initial crack uh, load appearance, and we can see that also we inhibit crack opening. Uh, but the structure become uh, uh, fr fr fragile, uh, and uh, for the other configuration, uh, the gain is less, uh, but the structure is more ductile. Uh, you can see that uh, we have also uh, a bigger uh, rigidity compared to the post-crack uh, uh, load uh, configuration. We can, uh, the bearing capacity can be enhanced by 140% in this case and about 55% in this case. Uh, Concerning the crack appearance and propagation, uh, mainly for the under-reinforced case, we have these uh, two line cracks, which are uh, in adequation with uh, uh, what we obtain in a concrete slab with line erector. It's a yielding line, it's the same. 
And then we have this uh, two cracks running from the corners. And finally, we have this uh, horizontal cracks. So we found that uh, uh, the yielding, yielding uh, analysis uh, we applied for concrete still works here because we have the same failure modes. But we have in the return walls, we have also cracks, a uh, big crack, axial crack, and some uh, inclined crack, which correspond to shear effects on the return world. For this case, in the reinforced cases, the cracks are really localized. We have localization of the deformation, and the cracks tends to open, and uh, not several cracks appear, only some, and these cracks are uh, opens when we increase the load. In the case of uh, reinforcement, you can see that we really inhibit all the cracks on the main wall. Uh, this is due to, of course, to the to the uh, effect of uh, the carbon fiber and plastic layers, and the rupture is mainly obtained at the return walls. You can see here the results obtained by digital image correlation, and we have one big axial crack on the on the return wall. So we can really enhance uh, the bearing capacity, delaying the crack appearance, and delaying also the crack opening. And this result is obtained for the two configuration. Uh, for this one, of course, the only very small cracks appears. For this configuration, uh, several cracks, not not uh, uh, main cracks, not uh, localized cracks, but several small cracks. Uh, and these cracks doesn't uh, really uh, open during the loading process. Simulation. Uh, as I told before, we want to use discrete element method because we think that uh, for masonry structures, we have initial uh, discontinuities. We have masonry and we have <coughs> mortar joint. Though, uh, and and uh, of course, it's probably better to use discrete element method. But we want really to check everything because it's uh, difficult to obtain objective results. Uh, for failure, for a finite element method, or even for discrete element method. So to check everything, uh, first we conduct simple tests. Uh, we have here a, a wall with uh, dry, uh, dry uh, blocks, dry masonry, and uh, we have only uh, uh, we have uh, applied uh, a drop. Of the uh, of the boundary conditions uh, at some length, uh, different tests are conducted to see different uh, failure pattern, and we want to modelize this to see if with simple model, because here we have only dead load, and uh, uh, dead load, and uh, of course uh, local displacement, which can uh, can. Uh, can represent uh, settlement uh, uh, without uh, interaction with uh, with soil. Uh, we have, uh, like uh, I, I, I've said, uh, different uh, failure pattern, and we want to see if uh, discrete element method is robust to modelize this first before uh, uh, modelizing our tests. Uh, the results are uh, quite good, uh, even uh, when we change uh, the size of the element uh, to uh, control the mesh, we can find that we reproduce failure uh, localization and uh, failure, failure, uh, uh, failure localization distance and uh, the pattern uh, for several tests. Sorry? Three minutes, okay. Uh, we have also done uh, this kind of simulation for other tests. No, not our tests. These tests are conducted uh, uh, by Restre, Pego, Vélez, and uh, Majnes, sorry for the pronunciations, and uh, uh, they have put uh, masonry walls on tilt table, and uh, they obtained the failure, and uh, we, s we have made the simulation of their test, and we found the same collapse mode. 
So uh, we found that uh, our simulation is robust. Uh, we go ahead with a more complicated problem. This test, this test is conducted by uh, uh, Lorenzo team. Uh, we have a, a wall with the axial load and the horizontal load. The displacement is blocked at this point. And uh, you can see that we obtain a uh, quite similar curve our, our, as Lorenzo obtained with finite element method. But our uh, uh, representation of the failure is uh, more accurate comparing to the finite element method. So even uh, when uh, the loading process is more complicated, we found good results. Uh, then we go uh, to modelize our test, of course. Uh, more complicated because in this case we have mortar uh, joint between the blocks, between the hollow concrete blocks. Uh, uh, but finally, uh, we found uh, quite good results for the under reinforced configuration. Uh, for this kind of simulation, the blocks are considered uh, rigid, no deformation in the block. Uh, and this is quite good uh, hypothesis because the main cracks appear between the hollow concrete blocks. Uh, of course, uh, for a uh, reinforced configuration, as I have showed before, we have cracks appearance in the blocks. This is why uh, for this kind of simulation, it's difficult to obtain good results in adequation. And until now, we failed to modelize the reinforced configuration. We have only uh, really good results for the inner reinforced case. Conclusion. Uh, of course, we qualify the behavior of concrete masonry submitted to normal pressure. Uh, we have shown that uh, we can increase the bearing capacity. Uh, the gain can be 140%. Numerical simulation using discrete element method provide good agreement in the case of inner reinforced configuration, but in the case of reinforced configuration, we have to, to work uh, more to find a way to make the simulation uh, uh, realist. Uh, so the, perspe the perspective is to simulate uh, the, 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 the masonry with carbon fiber reinforced plastic with discrete element method. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So I think we can take one quick question. Any questions from the audience? Yes, this question, because of you studied uh, a wall under uh, static pressure. Uh, normally, the main uh, problems are dynamic. When you consider explosion, it's a pressure, dynamic pressure, and so you have uh, nothing to do with uh, that case. What do you think about that and any yes. model? The dynamic case is, is in uh, progress. can show you, because it's very different problem, it's more complicated problem. Uh, for dynamic tests, we have this uh, Sharpie pendulum to make a local impact. And uh, we have made tests to understand, again, the phenomenology. And uh, we are doing the tests and doing the, the, the simulation. I can show you uh, the difference. Of course, we have several results, but uh, we need to work more to really understand what happens. Uh, here, dynamic impact. And you can see that uh, we have more uh, damage and uh, local damage. Uh, and depending the energy, depending the mass of the impactor, depending the velocity, uh, the, the, the results are quite different. We are working on this, and uh, it's uh, difficult until now to make uh, a conclusion. We, have, we need more tests. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we, we are running out of time, so we need to move on to the next presentation. Thank you again for uh, your thank interesting you. presentation.